All right, guys, so this is my 1983 Toyota Sun Raider. It is the long one, 21 foot. Uh, if you haven't seen the video walking around it and checking it out for the first time, we'll go ahead and check the link in the description. We're gonna be putting 35 inch tires under it, making it four wheel drive, which it's far from four wheel drive right now. And we're gonna be swapping the motor from this carbureted 22R to a fuel injected 3RZ from a Tacoma and it will be getting a turbo eventually. So for right now, we're gonna rip this 22R out and make room for that 3RZ. All right, so at this point in the project, it's really starting to set in that I'm finally working on one of these builds for myself. It's super rewarding building these campers no matter what, but knowing I'd be the one behind the wheel of this bad mamba jamba once it was finished made every bit of progress that much more satisfying, even if the progress was ripping out the engine. After getting the engine out, next up on the agenda was getting the donor truck in and pulling the engine out of that. We actually had an engine ready for the swap on the shelf, but this truck came up for a great deal a few days prior, so it just made sense to get it in the shop, pull what we needed, and take it to the scrapyard. And we probably needed the bell housing as well. So, got this. We uh, stripped it down, pulled the wiring harness off it because Offroad Solutions is building me a harness for the uh, ECU I have on the shelf. Clean this up, reseal it, and Right now, we're actually gonna go snag that 21 foot Sunraider and we're bringing it inside. And it's Thursday now. I'm hoping by Monday that we can have it on the solid axle, re-geared, spring over in the rear, and a roller as a four wheel drive. Let's go ahead and pull this thing inside and see how far we can get. So at this point, the truck had been back outside for a couple weeks and I was having withdrawals from getting a taste of that feeling of starting a new project. And if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. I was extremely pumped to get it back inside and get rolling on it again. So, to start things off, we get the truck up on jack stands. Some people are crazy and put these things on two post lifts, but you won't ever see me doing that. I do enjoy working on a car lift, but working on the ground actually has its benefits and it's so much safer. I start by simply unbolting anything that will unbolt easily, and once we have all the simple stuff out of the way, we bust out the Hypertherm 45 plasma cutter, and man, this thing just works. It's actually the second fab tool I bought, and it's worth its weight in gold. And here we are finishing cutting off all the two-wheel drive brackets off the frame before we start grinding. And grinding sucks. A lot. And man, we have a ton of it. Big time suck. What's that happening? While I was working on the front of the truck, Tim was working on the rear of the truck. He was getting the rear axle pulled down, putting spring perches on top of the axle versus under the axle, which is where they were from the factory, and then grinding down some of the weld on the axle to make the U-bolts fit. On these big jobs, it seems like every single task is a mission to complete, even if that task is as simple as putting U-bolts on. These first-gen Toyota Motorhome leaf springs are super dinky, so we'll be changing them out, and since we're already changing them out, we'll be likely making the swap to a Chevy 63-inch spring or something similar. I actually installed these on my old solid axle swap Tacoma and I'll link that video in the description. Dang, that's a long day. Um, so we did a lot of cutting, a lot of grinding, a lot of plasma cutting, and we even got the rear end sprung over instead of spring under. Um, factory, obviously these are spring under in the rear. So we went ahead, got the spring over axle kit, put the leaf springs on top of the axle instead of under the axle, which gets you about five, six, seven inches of lift in the rear. And in the front, we cut everything off, ground the frame down, pulled the trans out, made sure everything was happy there, and it is ready for its new four-wheel drive components. So what we have to do now is we're going to take our front cross member, tack it in place, get our leaf spring springs, bolt them in place, kind of, and we'll pull the axle from outside, pull it inside. It's got 529 gears in it because that's what's going to be pushing this thing. And we're going to see what it looks like with the front axle under it. I think we can get it done before we go home. It is 5 o'clock. It's Friday. I'm tired. Had a long week. But uh, we should be able to get that, at least that done before we go home. So enough talking. Let's get back to work.
So here we are grinding down the front cross member of the chassis to prep the metal down to bare metal everywhere that we're going to need to weld. We have to make sure that the prep is good enough that when we take it in for an alignment and everything checks out, we can burn it in without having to prep it anymore. Then we measure, measure, and measure again, and then we measure five more times. After that, we clamp in the front spring hanger and give it some solid welds. Once the front spring hanger is in, we naturally have to shove the axle under the truck to get a good visual of what the truck is going to look like when it's four-wheel drive. It's honestly a big waste of time because the axle is going to have to come right back out, but can you blame a guy for not being able to wait a few hours after waiting five years to build this rig? Day one went pretty much as expected. Uh, I got quite a bit done, but not near as much as I thought I'd get done, which is usually how things work around here. We got the front end cleaned up. We got the axle mocked up under here. Uh, this is the axle out of my rock crawler, so it's got 529 gears in it. Has these crazy adapters so I can run ultra four wheels. Obviously that won't transfer over to the uh, Toyota motorhome that we have it under now. Uh, the axle is mocked up in the front and today we're gonna focus on getting this in here for real. So we need to cut some holes in the frame, get some uh, shackle tubes, weld it in. Uh, we need to get the front of the frame plated so it's reinforced. And we just gotta keep throwing all these parts that are on this table onto the truck. So like I said, the first thing we have to do to get back to work is I need to get the front axle back out from under the truck. I ended up messing up one of the front cross member bolts being impatient, so not only did I lose time, but I'm out a few bucks. And that's what I get for being impatient. Now we're moving on to getting the shackle sleeve holes templated with the template from Skies Off-Road. Their template makes getting the right shackle angle super easy, and if you've done this before like me, you can actually get an even more dialed angle by moving the template around a little bit. I always have to finesse the holes just a little bit to get everything to line up perfectly, and don't expect these parts to just fall together perfectly, even if it is a template. While I'm working on the fabrication, my lovely wife Jenna decided that she didn't like the blue, teal, and purple stripes that someone oh so rudely put over the beautiful orange, yellow, and red factory stripes. What she's using to get all these vinyl stripes off is an eraser wheel. They're super cheap and they just chuck into any drill. As the name states, it basically just erases the sticker off the side of the truck. While I've always been a function over form guy, I'm slowly seeing the benefit to not only having something that performs, but also having something that looks good too. Dang. All right, guys. So, on this lovely Saturday afternoon, we got quite a bit done on the camper. So, obviously, um, it was on its own way. It's back on jack stands now. Throw up a picture. Looks super sick. I am super pumped with how it came out. So, uh, it's it's big. It's, it's a big, big truck. But that's what I was going for. I was going for the biggest, baddest four-wheel drive Sun Raider on the planet and I think I did it. Front axle is forward. So these are 31s. This is gonna have 35s and who knows, maybe it'll have room for 37s, but front axle is quite a bit forward. Um, I'm gonna send it. I like it where it is and I think I'm gonna leave it where it is. What I'm gonna do now, cause I don't have a whole lot left in the day, is I'm gonna go ahead and try and get this freaking engine bay cleaned up. It is a mess. So before we get any further on the engine swap, which is going to start happening very, very soon, we're going to start with this clean slate. I'm going to delete everything in here that's not absolutely necessary. Uh, leave the engine wiring for now, just so I have the stuff I need to have when Offroad Solutions sends me the harness. But I mean, this weird throttle cable cruise control contraption over there, these wild heater core hoses, um, it's all gone. So I'm going to delete all this. Get the extra clutch line out of there because the, the new clutch line is just going to go from the master or the master there down to the slave on this side for the W59. And we do have our W59 there. So we snagged the bell housing off it, put it on our W56. That's all ready to go. And this project is moving along great. I do have a grill up on the wall over there. I've been saving for something and I think it would look pretty good on this thing. See if I can't score some new bezels on the internet. I know they make repops. I am just gonna go ahead and delete all the house stuff they have in here. This is all house wiring and I'm just gonna redo it all. It's There's no sense in me trying to salvage this old, nasty, crusty wiring. I want it to look good in here, I'm considering shaving the bay, but that's all in the future. Right now we're gonna go ahead, get this cleaned up and then we will actually get it cleaned up with some Windex and just make it look pretty good in here. So let's get started. And this is probably the most satisfying job I've got to do so far. Getting a cluttered, nasty, dirty engine bay and giving it a refresh has got to be one of my favorite things to do. 
Normally you'd have to put all this junk back after the engine swap, but since I'm completely rewiring pretty much the whole truck, I didn't have to think about any of that. I did have to consider the fuse box and the headlights for the factory components, but we ended up changing that too, so no big deal. Wow, we sure took a lot of junk out of this engine bay. So we took the battery box that was out of here out, bunch of wiring that was for the old camper stuff, deleted all that. We will run all new stuff when we're ready. Got the heater core hoses that will not work for us out of there. We'll get the speedometer cable out. We need to order any one of those. Got a lot of stuff to do, but for today and for this episode, I think that's plenty. We got this thing back on its own weight. Of course, like I said, it's on jack stands, but spring over axle in the rear. It's gonna need new springs or blocks or something for now. I'm not sure if I'm gonna go the route of new springs uh, first time around because we are on a little bit of a time crunch. I don't have a whole lot of time to get this done before King of Hammers, which is what I'm trying to take this to. So we'll see, but the front is sitting nasty, sitting good, uh, stretched, huge. I mean, this is a 31 and it's almost to the front of the truck. So I think it looks great. We got the shackle tubes, the shackle mount, or the front spring mount, got all that in. So I think that's plenty for uh, this go around. Next time you see us, hopefully we'll be cutting the trans cross member out, putting frame plates on, getting steering where it needs to go, uh, all sorts of good stuff, shock hoops. Get those triple bypass shocks mounted. We have a lot more to do, but this was a great start. And uh, yeah, should do it for today. So thank you guys for tuning in. If you like this stuff, hit that like button, subscribe. There is going to be a ton more of this content. This is finally a rig that I can keep around and show you guys how they do off-road, on-road, all that good stuff. I'm going to be making this thing pretty much my daily driver so that I can fine tune how these campers are for the customers. So. I'm really excited to get this on the road and get going and take it to King, King of Hammers and show people. So, uh, like I said, hit that like button, subscribe button, check back in next week, and uh, I'll see you later.